DJI have just announced two new gimbals, the RS3 and the RS3 Pro, and I want to have a look at those today and show you how different they are from the RS2 and why they're a really good tool for independent filmmakers like us. Before I carry on, I just wanted to remind you that if you've got any questions or comments, you can put those down below in the comments section, and also there's an affiliate link in the description. If you could click on that and just go have a bit of a look around the DJI site, I'd really appreciate that too. Right, let's get on to it. The first thing that they're very clear about is the professional nature of the gimbal. They've gone out of their way to improve things as much as they can, make it quicker to use on a professional set, and a lot of the ecosystem of equipment and accessories that's building up around the RS3, the, the Ronin handheld gimbals, is keeping that single shooter and not needing a large team of people really in mind and they're quite clear about that and they really demonstrate it through the changes that they've made at the same time there are some advances that you'll see as i go through the video that help coordinating amongst large crews a lot easier as well one of the key things that they've addressed with it is the size of camera that can fit into the gimbal a lot of cameras are just outside the size limit that you can fit onto the RS2. It's a bit of a struggle to fit the Blackmagic 6K Pro that I've got here for example. It gets on there but there's not really any moving room for anything you might want to add on to it. The RS3 Pro is just that little bit bigger. They've made the arms a little longer and the motors a little stronger so you can now fit larger cameras onto here with a bit more breathing space. One thing in particular they've taken note of is the need to balance cameras with different size lenses on them. So now with the longer arms that are available you can fit a longer lens on here, a physically deeper lens, and be able to balance that up very very easily. They've also included this fine tuning knob on the tilt axis which will let you move the camera back and forth with millimeter precision and just really get a nice fine balance very quickly and they've also pointed out that all the components are teflon coated now so they do move very easily against each other without friction this is something that was a little bit difficult on even the rs2 so the great thing now is when you do add a new lens or you're swapping lenses out you can just use that fine tuning knob to move the camera back and forth and not have to lose and everything off and try and completely rebalance it again the next great thing is the locking on the arms now when you put the gimbal into standby mode normally it goes all floppy and and flops all around the place with the rs3 pro what you do is you put the lock mode on and it moves all of the arms into the locking position and automatically locks the arm now you can put it into locking mode it will put itself into a stable state you can swap a lens rebalance it move it around and put it back into normal use mode and you're ready to go now the RS3 is slightly larger to fit the larger capacity cameras but it doesn't weigh any more than the RS2 so that's a great thing it's still only one and a half kilos in itself and it has a four and a half kilo or ten pound payload so you can fit the larger cameras on here have all that extra space but you're not carrying around more mass another thing that helps with setup is the wireless shutter control this means that now it can control cameras with Bluetooth rather than having to put a cable between the gimbal in the camera and manage that cable as you rebalance and everything now you just need to put the camera into the gimbal turn it on and bluetooth will pair and you can control the camera wirelessly this is a much better solution and the less cables that are hanging around the better another physical change that's been made to the rs3 gimbals for better usability is the instant mode switch this lets you toggle through ptv pv and ftv modes straight away with a little thumb switch down the side speaking of usability the screen on here has been increased from a one inch screen to a 1.8 inch screen and it's no longer just black and white it's a full color screen and there are a lot more features that you can get to with that screen very very quickly now while they've made the arms larger they've made them a lot stronger and they've done this by changing the jointed carbon fiber that they had in the RS2 into a single piece of carbon fiber so there's a lot less weight in the arms and they can be a bit thinner while being a lot stronger they've also got a whole new generation of stabilization software on the RS3 Pro which 
they say increases the stability of your shots by 20%. This also means you've got improved stability when moving from a high shot, for example, to an underslung shot without getting those little bumps you might have seen in the past. The stability and moving from different shooting positions and angles has improved quite dramatically. They've also introduced a super smooth mode, which increases the power to the engines, increasing the torque, making them much more stable. This is something you might have if it's um, say attached to a car mount and you're doing rapid speed shots or something on bumpy roads. Using this increases the stability once again. And now for one of the really big things. Everyone's seen the ads for the DJI 4D and it's amazing autofocus. Well, they've taken that same LiDAR autofocus and it's now part of the RS3 Pro. It comes with the LiDAR and the focus motor and this allows for some of the most amazing autofocus which even turns your manual lenses into autofocus lenses. Um, I won't go too much into it right now. You've probably all seen the specs on the LiDAR from the 4D and <laughs> this is one thing I really can't wait to play with. It's going to be fantastic. The LiDAR itself works up to 14 meters away and it's got a 30 millimeter camera built into it with a 70 degree field of view. So it uses that for preview and positioning and doing the autofocus with various different modes and a really high sampling rate and a large number of focal points. This pairs of course with the new follow focus, the 2022 follow focus motor that works together with the LiDAR and the ability to calibrate the LiDAR with the lens that you've got on your camera. So there's a calibration step and everything in here as well. Now, if you're like me and you use a number of different lenses all the time, you can actually store the calibration for those lenses and camera combination in the LiDAR. It will remember them and you can reselect them next time you put that lens on so you don't have to recalibrate it all the time. There's also the Active Track Pro built into this, which is faster than any of the active tracking that we've had before. It uses a neural chip built into the whole thing to help with the active tracking. It's incredibly fast. I haven't got any particular details on that one, but it's another thing that I'm really looking forward to. So you can use the active track and the autofocus all together uh, to keep track of particular objects that you, that you want to stay in focus. Another part of the announcement today was the DJI transmission setup. You can have a look at that in other videos and things, but basically it's an offboard transmitter that can transmit the signal from your camera at 1080p, 60 frames per second, up to six kilometers. So they're using the same image transmission that we've had on the drones for ages now is available to plug directly into any camera. Now, if you are using the transmission stuff and the remote monitor, you can actually control the entire gimbal from the remote monitor, including the pan and tilt and everything and focus control. You can do this either with the handheld remote monitor and its built-in accelerometers, or you can use the Force Pro or even the DJI wheels to control it if that's what you, you want to do. And with a six kilometer control range, it's going to be a fantastic add-on to it as well and give you so much power. The price of the transmission stuff though is a little bit up there. I can't remember what it is exactly, but it's something I might look at later. So you can still just use your phone for the remote control, which is going to be perfectly good for most of us on a lower budget and running independently. So you can put the RS3 onto a crane or jib and you can control the gimbal just using your phone like we were able to with the RS2. There are a heap of accessories that you can get for the RS3 as well, including the twist grips and extension arms, which you can hold in a grip format or in a briefcase mode for the low slung shots. These extra handles also have mount points for an external monitor or something like that if you want to keep that on the gimbal. There's lots of ways you can configure this and uh, when mine arrives I'll show you how to set it up in various ways as well. You can also get an extra battery grip for it if you really want the extra power. It will run for about 12 hours on a fully charged battery and only takes about an hour and a half to recharge so you shouldn't ever need more than two of them always good to have an extra spare battery on hand though so that's probably worth getting so in the box if you get the pro combo kit which is 
obviously the one I recommend getting because you'll always be kicking yourself if you don't. It's got a nice carry case, the gimbal itself, it's got one battery grip, um, it's got a USB charging cable, a lens fastening support, the extended grip tripod thing that comes with it, you're always going to want that. Quick release Arca plate, a briefcase handle is comes in here the multi-camera control cable, a lower quick release plate, a phone holding mount, the focus motor, and the rail and rod kit for it. It's got focus gear strips, the Ronin image transmitter, so you've got that, which is the shorter range one, not the 6K one. That's gonna cost a bundle more if you want that. It comes with a lens fastening strap, which is, I believe, a Velcro double over kind of one. It's got a spare screw kit and a few other power and data cables and um, a couple of other um, cable strap tie things as well, because cable management is good. Now, the price is one of the more amazing things in here. It's 1100 US dollars, 1099 on the DJI site. If you're in New Zealand or Australia, that's uh, approximately 1600, 1700 dollars give or take a bit of tax and um, and shipping costs so that is a fantastic price for the amount of power that you're getting with this thing and the improvements that they've made over the RS2 if you've got an RS2 and it's doing the job for you um, and you're fine and it fits your cameras maybe it's not going to do a lot for you if you've got larger cameras or you're having a little bit of trouble balancing it on the lenses you've got it's not a bad price for the amount of gain that you're getting anyway i hope that's been useful if you've got any other comments or questions or things you want me to make videos about put it down in the comments below i read as many of them as i can i get back to as many of them as i can don't forget to click here to subscribe and click on all of these neat links down the bottom here and watch this video and this video because they're really interesting as well and i'll catch you in another video really soon see you later